I got for you. He's the author of How to Change Your Mind, What the New Science of Psychedelics Teaches Us About Consciousness, Dying, Addiction, Depression, and Transcendence. Michael Pollan. Michael Pollan's here. <laughs> Perfect so. guest for this discussion. If, yeah. if you're looking to convince someone to do more drugs, you have come to the right place. <laughs> and we were talking about drugs, and your book is about drugs. People know you as a food guy. Now, what? Yeah. why the change? Did you just pick the m wrong mushroom yeah, one I day? Could, is I, that, is that... <laughs> I thought there were chanterelles I was putting in that omelet. You have to, be, care you have to be careful, right? You I'm do? Not... Oh, picking mushrooms? Yes. Absolutely. I remember yeah. doing it once. They grow in cow shit. They do. That's right. Those are the safer ones to pick. There are other ones that you can really kill yourself if you don't right. don't do it yourself. But so no, I w I've always been interested in our engagement with the natural world, how nature changes us, the things we take into our bodies, how it affects our health, and so for me, it seems more yeah, continuous part of the not. spectrum. And, I and one of the really interesting things, all of us use plants for and fungi is to change consciousness, right? Whether it's coffee fungi or Fungi is mushrooms. Right, right. right. Uh, okay. Or uh, chocolate. I mean, and this is a universal human desire that I've always been curious about. Well, I wouldn't say chocolate changes our consciousness. It does in subtle ways. Oh, subtle. subtle. Yeah. No, yeah. it's got, well, it has, it has caffeine in it, and it has another thing that kind of gives you a little lift. You know pot's legal now, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they've got some shit that would really, I, I, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> No. So, but psychedelics obviously are a much more radical form of consciousness. So about changing. LSD. LSD and psilocybin, DMT, ayahuasca. Right. See, I feel I feel like they're so different. I never did uh, hiawatha, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, I've certainly done. Well, I don't know if I did acid. You know what? I did something that somebody sold to me and said right. was acid. Yeah. Well, that's the problem. That is the is problem. That, is you that, can't, you you know, can't, if you have prohibition, you can't regulate. Yeah. Timothy Leary once said to me before he, of course, before he died, not, no, from the grave, he said it to me. <laughs> <laughs> he still speaks, Tim, are you there? Hello. Uh, <laughs> he said, uh, he said, there really hasn't been acid since Owsley, the original maker. Yeah. Died. Well, at a certain point, the mob moved in on, on acid in uh, the hate. The in, mob. The mob, yeah. Oh, there were four hippies selling acid in uh, San Francisco in 1967. And one was killed horribly hung up from a tree. A second was killed. The other two realized bad business. Right. <laughs> they left. The mob got in, and the acid was never the same. Right. I, I don't think it was acid, because they can tell you it's anything. You right. Um, but it was something. I yeah. mean, it, was a, it, it, it wasn't good. Um, <laughs> As good as it should have been. But, but you're saying real acid, which they experimented with in the 30s and 40s, really helps a lot of people with stuff like PTSD, right, and anxiety and depression. Alcoholism. Alcoholism. Yeah. How does it do it? So, so what I was surprised to learn, I thought psychedelics began in the 60s. But there was a very rich history right. of research in the 50s, late 40s, using LSD, psilocybin, the ingredient in magic mushrooms, to help people deal with serious problems. Uh, we don't know exactly how it works, but it seems to lead, when it works, there is a, a profound experience of ego dissolution, sometimes called a mystical experience. People's sense of their ego or self dissolves temporarily. And when this happens, you're freed of various patterns of thought. The brain kind of reboots. And when, uh, and this single experience, and it's important to understand that the, the way these drugs are being used in therapeutic settings is very different than the way you use them or... I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, <laughs> You're right. Uh, by the way... That was private. Uh, we put something in your water tonight <laughs> that I, it's gonna make the second half of the no, show a little more water. water. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's... <laughs> it's, a, it's a very... <laughs> <laughs> it's a very different uh, thing. It's a guided experience. You're with a therapist the whole time. They prepare you oh, very well, that's carefully. No fun. Well, talk about a buzzkill for a trip. You're with a therapist the whole time. <laughs> thanks, Dad. No thanks. They tell you what to no, do I'm if kidding. you get into trouble. Uh, basically, they encourage you to surrender because when right. you feel your ego dissolving, it can be really scary. It's a death. Right. And so they tell you to go with it, relax your mind and float downstream, as right. John Lennon advised. And, um, and then during the experience, which you, you, you're lying down, you're wearing eye shades, so it's a very internal voyage. Uh, you're listening to music on headphones, and they're there with you the whole time in case you get 
nervous or, or uh, freak out in some way. And then afterwards, you come back the next day and they help you integrate the experience, figure out what it means and apply it to your lives. People come up with these radical new perspectives on their own lives that allows them to change. You? They'll, it happened to you? Yeah, oh yeah. I, and what, I was, what changed? What was the perspective? How were For you me, different before? How was yeah, your life actually different it's now? It's really hard to articulate, but I did have on a high dose psilocybin trip guided. I had an experience of complete ego dissolution. I looked out and I saw myself painted over the landscape. I was just like butter or paint out there. But I wasn't troubled by this at all. There was another I that suddenly manifest that was very kind of fine with whatever happened. And it made me realize for the first time that I'm not identical to my ego. That there's another ground on which you can stand. And that, become, that turns out to be a very powerful idea. Most of us are slaves of our egos. See, I this, never, I didn't have that experience with mushrooms. And I did mushrooms You didn't take the, enough. I've, I, oh, I've definitely, <laughs> I've taken, I've, mushrooms I've done many times. Yeah. It always, it's a laughing drug to me. Right. You, you don't find yourself just laughing uncontrollably? No, it's about context. Because, I mean, again, really? I, was, I was having this inner trip. I wasn't like, the senses were not coming in. I, it was dark. And no, I'm, uh, just, I'm just on the floor. Yeah. Just really, no, like literally on the floor. And like oh, I, everything's I, funny because like everything that is normal in your life, when you think of, is hysterical because it doesn't make sense. Like most drugs make me horny. But, <laughs> but like not, not mushrooms. No. It, it, sex seems like, why would I do that? Why would I <laughs> make my penis get bigger and put it inside of a person? <laughs> it, it's really, that's, that's what mushroom, like. Like what? Every, but that, with everything, it makes me, it makes well, me see, decon deconstruct that's everything. New, like that's one of the new perspectives yeah. I was talking about. Right. <laughs> Your sex addiction addiction has been cured. It's, it, 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 no, it's, it's, it's not an addiction. I don't need no curing. <laughs> All right, my last thing I have is microdosing. A lot of people these yeah. days are talking about microdosing, yeah. which is a little bit of LSD. Right, like that a they tenth take, of a yeah, normal dose. And they take it during the day. I mean, they're, right. they're just and not like, work. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're not the lizard king. They're just yeah. out <laughs> doing their normal thing. What right. do you know about that? Is that something you recommend? So, no, um, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for coming. All right, no. Um, it, there's a lot of anecdotal evidence that it helps people, makes them more creative, makes them less depressed. But I looked into it. There's no research at all. We've never done a study, a, a controlled study. It's, right. gonna, it's getting underway in the next year or two, so we may learn more. It strikes me as a funny thing that we've taken this drug that is so uh, transformative and disruptive, and we've turned it into, with microdosing, just another productivity drug. Make you a better cog in the machine. Right, like seems, coffee. It's like, what would capitalism right. do with psychedelics? Microdosing. That's why they love coffee. Yeah, exactly. Back to work. And tobacco. Yeah. Right.